You know, if I've heard it once, I've probably heard it a thousand times from my wife that if I would just listen, I'd learn a lot more. I have to admit she's right. Um, <clears throat> I've always learned more from patients, other docs I was working with, and now that I'm uh, concentrating on the YouTube channel, I'm learning a lot from the viewers. Angie Stones, thank you for, uh, <clears throat> for introducing this article. Uh, we'll talk about this article uh, in just a minute. It's a recent uh, update that gets very, very deep into, um, or maybe very molecular in the adjective sense of the word, uh, into niacin. So <clears throat> Tom Deck reviewed it, said it's a, great, a good article. He had some interesting comments about APOC3, APOE, um, VLDL, LDL and small dance LDL. Uh, but let's go into the article itself. <clears throat> now, before we do, <clears throat> I will have to say this. Uh, according to the authors of the article, you know, there were only 18 people. There were 18 fat men, um, obese, middle-aged men, 40s, 50s, 60s, uh, that had metabolic syndrome. What they said was this was a, quote, um, hypothesis generating study. Uh, whenever you see that term, it reminds me of a, <clears throat> I, I heard this quote somewhere and I decided to look it up. Now I've never heard of this guy, David uh, Levithan, every day. But here's the thing, every answer creates new questions. And that's the whole point with this article. That's what a hypothesis generating article is. So let's go back. We'll click on uh, Angie, Dr. Angie Stones' uh, uh, link, and you get to Journal of Clinical Lipidology, uh, May, June 2018, Niacin Action in Atherogenic Mixed Dyslipidemia of Metabolic Syndrome, Insights from Metabolic Biomarker Profiling and Network Analysis. Now, <clears throat> Again, sounds very geek, and you notice this this niacin study group. Uh, before I, uh, I go there, I'll just make a comment. Uh, they really um, complicated the heck out of that art uh, of that article title. Basically, what it's saying is they're looking at niacin. As we all know, there's a lot of questions about a. The biggest question is does niacin work or not, and b. If so or if not, why? And the reality is they did raise a lot of questions. Um, and again, we'll get there in just a couple of minutes. But uh, first, what is this niacin study group? Um, <clears throat> didn't take me anywhere. So I uh, actually tried looking up niacin study group in Wikipedia and a couple of other places. Can't find it. If anybody knows anything about the niacin study group, I'd be very interested in hearing about that. There's a, there's, they have these study groups. For example, the statin study group, uh, Rory somebody, very pro-statins. Uh, so most of the time, if you see stuff coming out of, from the statin study group, you're going to see pro-statin uh, results. Niacin study group, I don't know. I never heard of it. I'd love to uh, find out more about it. <clears throat> now, before I go through the details of this uh, study from here, I put it on um, my usual <coughs> um, Adobe so we could see it a little bit better and so I could mark it up. And unfortunately, I really geeked out. I ended up spending three hours on this article because it's very, very interesting. Um, <clears throat> I'm jumping to this image. As you can see, this image is really talking about clusters. So for example, HDLC increased, um, triglycerides decreased significantly. Over here, uh, tissue necrotic, uh, necrotic factor, an inflammatory uh, component, um, decreased. Now, if you look at this group up here, these are really more of the lipid profiles, APOE, APOB, LP little a, <coughs> L, um, uh, LDL, APOA1, all of these, uh, for the most part, you got um, improvements in the lipids. 
Um, <clears throat> this green, however, down in the bottom, this is all uh, glucose metabolism related stuff. And as you see, um, green's not always good because you got increase in uh, HOMA. Uh, basically, HOMA is a, a very good an type of analysis. It's a different, more technical type of analysis of insulin resistance. So you got an increase in insulin resistance. Now these guys came in with a HOMA of what, six on average? The normal uh, HOMA should be less than two, certainly less than three. So these guys, as I said, they were obese middle-aged men with significant, 18 middle-aged, 19 middle-aged obese men with significant insulin resistance coming into the study. Now, let's look over here. So here we, at the top left, we have a cluster associated with lipids. And again, for, for the most part, significant improvements in the lipids. In the bottom left, we have um, uh, the glucose metabolism area. Both of them have a little uh, inflammatory marker, IL-6, down here with the glucose, and uh, TNF-A up with the... Um, with the lipids. <clears throat> now here's the major cluster of the um, inflammatory factors on the right. CRP took a major dive, uh, high sensitivity CRP, C-reactive protein, um, and tissue necrotic factors, the other ones over here. All of those took significant decreases. So that is a great way to look at that picture um, in terms of uh, of what they showed. Let's go back to the title page. Uh, this is the place that I looked it up. Again, Journal of Clinical Epidemiology. Um, here it was on the Elsevier, Sevier, or Elsevier uh, uh, group of journals, and they tried to charge me for it, but I was able to uh, to sneak around and get some um, <clears throat> get some of these images without having to go through uh, the paywall. Either that or I've been through the paywall in the past and forgot all about it. Now, <clears throat> I'm not gonna, they did have a good introduction. This is going to be long enough and geeky enough with get, out, without getting into the introduction. But I will tell you, um, as you go through this, basically this article shows time and time and time again, as you get deeper into the molecular impacts of niacin, um, it's a mixed bag. <clears throat> and that mixed bag could have uh, resulted in some of the mixed bag of, um, of uh, impacts that we see. For example, the studies like AIM High and HPS2 Thrive. Now, again, <clears throat> this study is long enough. Uh, this video is going to be long enough. I'm not going to go through all the details on the introduction and the background. I'm just going to go, like I said, to some of the images. You know, this is sort of like uh, when I was a kid. I'd, you jump over all the text because you get really bogged down. Unfortunately, I'm not that smart. I didn't jump over all the text. I read it. That's why I ended up spending a couple of hours on it. Um, <clears throat> but the images often show you the most important part of uh, what's going on. I had a mentor once who would go, in any article, he'd go straight to the tables, the images, the uh, pictures, and again, he was right. They show you what you need to look at. Now, unfortunately, uh, you can't see all of the things on, on uh, this image, but basically what they did, the, the vertical axis and the horizontal axis are both the list, the extensive list of the molecular um, biomarkers that they looked at. Now, uh, the, this green line that's totally green right down the middle here is because you're looking at correlation. Uh, top green is a one-to-one -one perfect correlation. Bottom red uh, is a negative, so in other words, it's uh, significantly inversely related. And then gray is zero where it's maybe not so clear. So again, this uh, perfect green here is where uh, the molecule is perfectly correlated with itself. APOE, for example, is perfectly correlated with APOE here. The third one down, the third one across. 
Now, <clears throat> let's look at something that uh, might be inversely related. Um, I saw those a few minutes ago. Uh, Apo B Homa, for example, and well, no, H, uh, gosh. Anyhow, there were some interesting correlations in here, and unfortunately, now that I've gone back and burned a couple more t hours of time, <clears throat> I can't find those. Um, but that's the way you look at this. You basically look at uh, something like, well, let's just go ahead and, and look at it. Uh, Homa and what's, uh, what's it correlate? Well, it correlates perfectly with Homa. It correlates negative with TM. And most of these things it's uh, perfectly correlating with. Total cholesterol is fairly inverse to um, IL-6. Um, <clears throat> I guess that's interesting. Total cholesterol is also uh, negatively associated with HOMA. So again, you're getting some decrease in uh, total cholesterol with niacin, but an increase in the HOMA. So that's what that means. You can see that right here in the middle. Um, <clears throat> Let's look at things like uh, tissue necrotic factor. Uh, gosh, they don't have them in alphabetical order. And C-reactive protein. Um, actually, a fairly gray type of um, correlation. Again, pardon me, maybe spending too much time on that. Let, let's go... Uh, into some of the conclusions uh, and discussions. Actually, in editing this video, I decided we really needed to break here, uh, and that's why you see the different background. Um, <clears throat> in, on second thought, what we're going to do is go back, cut this off now, and as just a brief uh, review, we've talked about uh, Adiel and this, and this group went way deep into studying the molecular biomarkers associated with niacin. Again, thanks Dr. Stones for uh, recommending this article. In the next, um, the next video, it gets even geekier. We, uh, he starts going into clusters. There are seven significant clusters of biomarkers, and uh, we'll get there next.